right? So if you mm-hmm. think about a basement of a house, and if your basement of your house has cracks, and if the foundation has, you know, pieces of mortar missing, you're going to have leaks and you're going to have insects and you're going to have rodents and things like that. And that makes your foundation weak. The minerals in the body kind of serve the same purpose. And when they become excessive or buried or when they become deficient, that can cause our foundation to have leaks and holes that end up affecting our health if they're left long enough. Welcome to the Soaring Child podcast, where parents of children with ADHD learn tips and tricks to help their child soar at home, at school, and in life. We feature interviews with experts, medical professionals, and parents just like you who are learning how to reduce ADHD symptoms using food and other natural strategies because children with ADHD deserve to soar just like every other child. I'm your host, Dana Kay. Hello, parents. This is Dana Kay here with another edition of the Soaring Child podcast. Now, did you know that your hair is a window into your soul? No, well, not really into your soul, but it is a window into your body, into the inner workings of your biochemistry over the past one to three month period. And it provides insight into key minerals that are missing in our body or are overloaded in your body and also toxic elements like mercury, arsenic, lead, and cadmium. It can help you find unique imbalances that can be the underlying root cause of many major health issues, including ADHD. And so if you are interested in what I've just had to say, this is a not to be missed episode. We are talking all about HTMA testing, which stands for hair tissue mineral analysis. My guest is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, a board certified holistic health practitioner, an HTMA practitioner, an educator, a multi-time kettlebell sport world champion. Wow. (laughs) Amazing. I want to hear more about that. (laughs) And a health, wellness and fitness advocate. She discovered HTMA testing and uh, chose to specialize in mineral balance after this specific diagnostic test identified the true root cause of her chronic fatigue and estrogen dominance. Lisa works exclusively with HTMA and has helped thousands dig to the root cause of health issues by focusing on mineral balance and a holistic approach. She is the founder of Vicon Customs, which is a natural supplement line used by health professionals, including myself, around the globe, which she created specifically to streamline supplementation for effective mineral balance. Vicon Customs provides formulas of all ages, including pregnancy and breastfeeding, as well as, listen to this one, custom supplements for animals, all based on HBA testing. Now it's time to welcome Lisa to the Soaring Child. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me. Oh my goodness, Dana. Thanks for having me. And I, every time I hear an introduction, I always think, who is that person? <laughs> it's not me that's that's not me I know (laughs) what the feeling exactly when I go on to other people's podcasts and they introduce me I'm like no that's that's not who I am but this is exactly who you are Lisa so (laughs) welcome (laughs) I know well yeah thank you for having me it's just such important information and and I'm so happy to be here to share anything that I can for sure Fantastic. Look, um, I, I work closely with Lisa. Uh, we uh, we uh, do a lot of testing in, inside our business and uh, Lisa's uh, Vicon Customs creates custom supplements for my clients as well. And I thought, who better to talk about this? Uh, so why don't we dive in? Uh, why don't we just start right at the beginning? What is HTMA? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So hair tissue mineral, mineral analysis, been around for decades and it really came to light really came to light back in the 70s and so that's when a lot of the real work was being done and bringing to the surface what the ratios of certain elements tested can tell us about what's happening at a deep level in the body at a cellular level and that's why when you when you i you know when you joked and said a window into the soul i'm like it's close (laughs) (laughs) because it tells us more 
then the blood labs can. It's great to correlate with blood labs, but it just gives us a little bit of a deeper picture and it brings to light things sometimes months or even years before they'll show up in blood. And so that's a really important factor. And some of those discoveries back in the 70s, of course, were made by our pioneers, Dr. Ekin Watts, and, uh, and even Dr. Malter can be in that mix too. And really what it is, it's a, it's a tissue biopsy of hair. And what they discovered at that period of time outside of those interrelationships of the minerals themselves and the ratios is they discovered that the patterns of the way that minerals and elements were deposited in the hair were actually dynamic, but also not unintentional. Right. So so the patterns really mean something to all of us who now analyze hair uh, with HTMA results and can give us a lot of information about the foundation of the body. And that's what minerals really are. That's what I think about. So when I talk about mineral balance, it's about building and supporting the foundation. And I always say of the house. Right. So if you mm -hmm. think about a basement of a house and if your basement of your house has cracks, and if the foundation has, you know, pieces of mortar missing, you're going to have leaks and you're going to have insects and you're going to have rodents and things like that. And that makes your foundation weak. The minerals in the body kind of serve the same purpose. And when they become excessive or buried or when they become deficient, that can cause our foundation to have leaks and holes that end up affecting our health if they're left long enough. And, and so that's what it's really all about. It's building a healthy, strong foundation of balance so that everything else can cascade into balance as well. Well, that is a very, very good explanation. And, uh, you know, I use that foundation uh, analogy a lot when it comes to diet. And so obviously you're getting a lot of your, your minerals uh, and vitamins through diet. And so it makes sense that that's also part of that foundation. Now, uh, you know, let's talk about a couple of, things that we're looking at what you know what what minerals are we looking at when we're talking about this test yeah so i mean in trace elements testing that's the one that a lot of us use there's mm -hmm. 37 different elements tested and so wow. really when we're talking about the ratios those significant ratios that were discovered back in the 70s when those breakthroughs were coming through when hair tissue analysis really kind of hit the integrative um almost integrative therapy um, world, those, the big four minerals, we call them are calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. And so those account for about 75% of the numbers that make up those significant ratios that identify different functions in the body and, and what those functions at a cell cellular level, how they're operating. And so really the changes in those four minerals as well is important because they affect all the other trace minerals and ultra trace minerals as well. And so there's always just a little bit of a balancing act and that's why it's called mineral balance. Mm -hmm. And, and when we have one of the first things to upset that balance is guess what stress, mm -hmm. right? We know how detrimental stress can be on adults, children, animals, right? And as soon as there's stress, and some people misinterpret, so when I say stress, they think, okay, work, finances, obligations. That's not always the case though. We forget that sometimes there's an internal stressors that our body is dealing with that we may not even realize that are causing inflammation and other issues within the body. And those stressors, that stress can be identified on HTMA, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And look, I talk a lot on the podcast and uh, in all of the, you know, when I'm presenting about that inflammation is one of the key drivers of ADHD symptoms. And yeah. so um, I love that you uh, you tied that stress into that because when I, I refer to stresses as well, and it's, it's not that stress at work. It's not that stress, no. you know, with finances. Stresses yeah. can be everywhere. You know, even environmental toxins mm -hmm. can cause stress in the body. So, uh, you know, thank you for sharing that. Now, I know, uh, um, uh, you know, obviously when we're first looking at an HTMA, we really want to make sure those top four minerals are balanced. Uh, what other sort of patterns are we looking at uh, and how, uh, you know, can they sort of contribute to either the overall stress in the body or uh, symptoms that come out? Mm. Well, so think about the mechanism of recycling because 
The first mineral that supports us when we're stressed is sodium. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, so many times you see that acute alarm stage of stress. And so let's dial back just a little bit. So there was a doctor, he, uh, Dr. Han Selye years ago, and he identified the basically a stress theory, which was a general adaptation syndrome. And what it addressed was and showed us was that we go through an, an alarm stage of stress. So think about uh, a simple example of, you know, you're being chased by an animal, a bear, okay? Y you, right, you wanna be able to fuel the body to run from that bear, but then you also want the body to come back down into homeostasis when you've either gotten away or the bear has stopped chasing you, whatever happens. So that so you're that in that fight or flight response when you're running yes, away. Yes, you're running, you're in sympathetic dominance, fight or flight. And that's when everything else in the body sh kind of shuts, shuts down so that you can use all the energy to run, right? And then, and then once that stress is gone, again, the body comes back down into that more resistance or resilient stage of stress so that everything's calm and we can take on more and we kind of relax back down almost into a little bit of rest and digest, right? Because we've had a stressful event and now we need to recoup from that. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is nowadays is we're getting more chronic stress. And again, a lot of internal stress that we may not even realize is there. And that keeps our sodium and potassium, the ratio of those two elevated. And so as soon as that ratio is elevated, then we have other symptoms. You talk, well, we've already addressed one, inflammation, aggressiveness, irritability, right? All these things come with a sodium that is more than 2.4 times the level of potassium in the body. And this is important for, for us to understand, especially when it comes to children, mm -hmm. because a lot of times their patterns are in that fight or flight, sympathetic dominant pattern. And, and they're missing some of the minerals that kind of calm that pattern down. And, and they find it hard to control. And this comes back to what you had said with regards to fight or flight. So fight or flight, sympathetic dominance. When we're in that sympathetic state, it's very volatile. Sodium elevation, sodium is very volatile. So then it's the mood of that individual can be very volatile. And that's why it can go up and down very rapidly and they can have problems controlling how they react to things and how stressed they also get to things because they're kind of stuck in that alarm stage of stress and they just can't quite seem to calm that down so that the body comes back down into, uh, into homeostasis, which is balance. And, and I think that that was a really great example that you shared because a lot of our kids with ADHD are do have those issues with mood. And so is it related to ADHD or is it a sodium issue? Is it a uh, pattern or an out of ba balance in the minerals? Now, uh, I talk a lot about copper overload and uh, I would love to dive into that a little bit uh, with you because there is a lot of overlapping symptoms between copper overload and ADHD. So yeah. can you just share, you know, how does, how does copper fit into ADHD? Yeah. So, so let's start with the pattern that where every small human, every baby is born with a particular pattern. Mm -hmm. And so that pattern is called fast oxidation. And so think about what we just talked about with sympathetic dominance, fight or flight, fast oxidation is that sympathetic state. So, you know, baby's born and even, even the, the light now is stress. Now we've got noise, we've got light, all those changes. That's a bit of, bit of stress that they have to get used to, of course. And so as children age in fast oxidation, two things are related to that. So we talked about sodium and potassium. Remember we talked about the big four minerals, calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. So calcium and magnesium are more of those calming minerals that are needed for that, that almost like their uh, sedativeness, right? The calming down of the system. And so in fast oxidizers, which most children are, right? Depending on, on the stress that they've dealt with or they're, they're dealing with, um, the calcium and magnesium are very low. So that allows, again, that high sodium to create the volatility in their mood and some of their reactions. Now, think about copper. Just in general, as an element, it's a really great electrical conductor, 
And so when copper comes into the body and people say, well, how does that happen? Well, there, there are metals and minerals when in elevation in the mother can be passed to the fetus before the baby's born. And so the baby can be born with some of these because of the fact that that is how they were uh, transmitted. And so we're seeing this more and more with regards to copper. And there's obviously some reasons behind that. And we might get into those as well. But in general, that copper causes excitability in the body. It causes electrical function to be really heightened. And so that's where, again, now we're taking that sodium reaction where it's very volatile and it can affect mood and aggressiveness and irritability and some of these things that make it hard for the child to control. And now we're layering onto that with that electricity and, 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 and we're kind of, and I feel like a lot of parents are like, well, what do I, you know, how do I control this? But we're missing some of the underlying causes. And so that's why, I mean, this was something for me with regards to finding HTMA testing, it really identified and has for so many, you know, some of those root causes. And I'm not going to say all of them. This is only a piece. This is a piece of the puzzle right? There's more pieces in everybody, but this is a really important piece that kind of digs deep to, to give us a few uh, potential root causes to some of these issues that we see and, and sometimes are not easily explained. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, people are probably wondering, well, okay, so it can come from the mother, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, they, they may have had a copper IUD in, mm -hmm. uh, in the past. Uh, they could have been in a house that had copper pipes. That is a Absolutely. big one. Yeah. Uh, and so that water that they're drinking is, it has got copper in it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also copper cookware that yeah. it can come from. What else, uh, where else would uh, someone uh, get exposed to copper? So think estrogens. Anything that mimics estrogen, because estrogen and copper are succinctly related. Mm -hmm. And so as the body gets exposed to more estrogen, the more copper ends up being stored. The more copper that's stored, the more estrogen the body wants to make. So it's a circle. Mm -hmm. right? it's, it's just a constant cycle. And so fragrances, phthalates, yep. right? Xenoestrogens, mm -hmm. um, BPAs, yep. right? plastics, plastics. Yep. perfume, mm -hmm. right? Who, people still wearing perfume. You mentioned IUDs, birth control is another one, hormone replacement therapy, even chlorine in pools. If we're in the pool every day or in the hot tub every day, that mm -hmm. can drive copper imbalance. Vegan and vegetarian diets, right? Organic, like the new organic, the certified organic fertilizers are copper sulfate. Mm -hmm. So that can be an exposure as well. So there, there really, there's so many different, you mentioned copper pipes. Uh, the other one I'm seeing now too, not so much anymore, but within the last 12 months kind of made a resurgence was the Moscow mule cups, right? The copper yes. cups that people are drinking out of. Yes. And, and please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying copper's bad. We mm -hmm. need copper in the body, right? Mm -hmm. But we need it in balance with the other minerals so yeah. that there's nothing that's going to be causing a huge stress on the system. And then of course, putting us into that high sodium to potassium area where then we have that volatility and irritability and all those symptoms that come along with it. Yeah. And then when you add in that copper overload, you've got that yep. electricity and that, yes. you know, that hyperactivity adding into the mood issues and then that driving those mood issues even more with that electricity. So you can see how, you know, these just these three things that we've talked about here uh, really correlate with a lot of symptoms of ADHD. Now, Yep. Um, we've talked about the sources of copper. Um, are there any other things that causes that cause that copper imbalance? Oh, more things for copper imbalance. I mean, even so when someone is extremely stressed, mm -hmm. copper can become imbalanced in the body from depletions in other minerals, mm. right? So balance is is just that it's all about balance. And so for those of you listening, if you've ever, if you ever, if you haven't done this yet, Google the mineral wheel and the mineral wheel pops up and there are interrelationships between all the elements with multiple arrows moving in multiple directions. And this is one of the reasons why the HTMA test is one of the hardest, I think one of the hardest to analyze because it really does take a lot of educating and, and reviewing to understand all those interrelationships. So let's put something simple into the, into the mix. So 
let's just say, even if a child didn't have that copper exposure prior to being born into the world, okay, as a fast oxidizer, naturally that pattern shows us that there's a little bit of calcium and magnesium insufficiency, a little bit of sodium and potassium that's just slightly too high, right? And so what what, how does that trickle down? Well, that stress of magnesium deficiency and that increase in sodium also a lot of times brings about a low zinc level because they're using up a lot of zinc. Well, if we're using up a lot of zinc, right? If the child's using a lot of zinc and they have estrogens in their environment, right? The xenoestrogens we talked about, they're drinking out of a plastic cup, they're, they're being exposed to these things, then the copper is allowed to rise a little bit out of control because the zinc is the one that kind of keeps it in balance because they are antagonists to one another. And so they both need to be in balance in the body in order to create that, that mood. And so when we have a zinc deficiency, which in a lot of cases, that's what some of our children are dealing with, then copper can be allowed to build in the system. And then of course, the more that happens, the more symptoms end up coming up from that. It's fascinating. And, uh, you know, when I first learned uh, HTMA, you, as you said, it's a really, really hard test to analyze. And so just going out and, you know, getting an HTMA and trying to work out, oh my gosh, I need to bring in some magnesium. Oh, I need to bring in some zinc. That's definitely not the way to go. It takes years and years to really get to a stage where you can make sense of that really fine balance. It is about that balance, isn't it? It's not yeah. just about one out of range marker. It's about how they all play in with each other. You know, another thing, what you mentioned, I do find a lot of, uh, I do a lot of uh, um, mineral and methylation blood testing uh, mm -hmm. and we find copper and zinc out of balance a lot. And it's really important to have them in balance because it can create a lot of the symptoms similar to, to ADHD. Yeah. The problem is though, if you've got a copper overload and you bring in zinc, too fast, it can cause something called copper dumping. Can you just explain yes. a little bit about that for me? Absolutely. So, so what the body does naturally when we have over, uh, you know, kind of an overload of copper happening, it's going to be circulating. And that's one of the things, you know, if you see something elevated in hair, it's being picked up by the fluids that are, that the hair is exposed to because it's circulating in the body. And so what happens though, with things like copper and even calcium, if it, if it comes in excess, causes a lot of oxidative stress in the body. So again, that's one of, another one of those internal stressors mm -hmm. when they really build to that level. And so what the body wants to do it, is it wants to shuttle it somewhere safe to kind of turn that stress off. And so that ends up in the soft tissue. And the soft tissue, including organs, copper loves to deposit in the liver and congest the liver. It also can deposit in the brain. And that's why copper as well is, is responsible and, and sometimes can be the root cause of a lot of mental health issues mm -hmm. because of where it deposits in the body. And so the more copper that's circulating, the more places it's going to be end up deposited because, you know, once, once one area is full, it's going to move on to the next one. Right. And so the longer that's circulating, the more copper we can have buried. And then when it's buried, it doesn't always show up on the test because it's not in circulation anymore. Now, when it's buried, though, if we bring in something like zinc or even other minerals that affect copper, like chromium or molybdenum or manganese, these at especially doses that are too high can push that copper back out into the system right into circulation and the circulation is what causes the symptoms because now it's circulating and now everything that was was kind of flaring when the copper was coming in is going to start flaring as it goes into circulation the only thing that calms it down is either leaving the body which in most cases that mechanism maybe isn't ready to do that um, but is to be re, re uh, deposited in the soft tissue that's what takes the symptoms away so you have to be very careful with regards to how that is handled to make sure that what you need to transport copper to be able to have it slowly mobilized to minimize symptoms and what you're using for those things is very strategic.
Yeah, definitely. Now, I, I, I get a lot of families that come to me and uh, want to do heavy metal testing mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, there's obviously we're exposed to heavy metals uh, so much uh, these days and it's really it's hard to avoid them. And it's in small amounts, it's okay. But when you have a, a body that is in a chronic state of health or in a chronic state of inflammation, you know, those heavy metals can add to all of that stress. Uh, so can you talk to me a little bit about um, how heavy metals play into the HTMA test? Yeah. So, I mean, the HTMA really is a good way to identify heavy metals. Now, if you have a child, for example, or anyone who is in an extremely depleted state, so we've been talking a lot about fast oxidation, sometimes it's the other way, sometimes that stress has now moved us over into that rest and digest, right, and we're, and everything's kind of slowing down. And when that happens, toxic metals may not show up on the in the hair, because again, they're buried, and they're mm -hmm. not circulating. So we don't see them until the functionality of the body is is supported so that there's energy to be able to start opening some of those doors. I would say when things get buried, it's kind of like when you have company coming over and you've got a little bit of a, a mess going on. So you throw it in a closet, you shut the door, right? <laughs> you're okay for now. And I would say when things are circulating in the body and it's causing oxidative stress, the body's going to shunt them into the, into the soft tissue and kind of close the door on them for later right? Until it has the energy to deal with it and open that door and, and get rid of them. And so same thing goes with heavy metals. Now, when you're fast oxidation, right? And when we're in sympathetic dominance, if there isn't a, a lot of other internal stress going on, then you may be, they may be mobilizing some heavy metals as well. And then they show up on the test. And so the question of it is, are, is the person a poor eliminator, which would be that Paris, like that rest and digest slow oxidation that they would be not, they wouldn't have the energy to be able to open those doors. Fast oxidizers would, so they would be good eliminators, right? So it depends on what type of eliminator that particular individual is or where they're at now. Because remember, HTMA patterns are dynamic, they can change, right? As we start to balance things, those patterns can change. One of the key factors though, that I find so important when it comes to heavy metals is that so many people that's their sole focus and they want to check the heavy metals they want to chelate them and they want right and they want to take them out of the system but they're missing a very important part and that's the replacement of elements theory right and so what that means is if you have something for example like zinc zinc is chemically very similar to cadmium okay and so if we have a zinc deficiency so we mentioned earlier that zinc deficiency can be quite common in children and so if we have zinc deficiency and we have cadmium or even mercury that's another one cadmium or mercury in our environment then the body is going to hang on to those heavy metals because ultimately the body's main goal every single day is to survive and if it doesn't have zinc to do a job that zinc needs to do, it's going to keep something that's chemically similar because the zinc is missing. So the, the first response to heavy metals is give the body the minerals it's missing or that are out of balance, because that's going to allow the body to have what it needs to do its jobs. And then those it, it doesn't want the toxic metals, but it needs them right now. And so even during chelation therapies, I see this all the time and they're like, well, I've been chelating mercury for forever and it just keeps showing up on the test. I'm like, well, what does your zinc look like? What do the minerals look like? Because if that mercury keeps popping up, either there's a, an exposure that's, that's current or the body's sequestering it to do a job for something that's else that isn't there. So that replacement theory is really important. And that's why it's so important to bring in mineral balance first then see what all those toxic elements look like because they can wreak havoc too, right? We know that. Yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, all different conditions. Yeah, look, I um, uh, I I've come across uh, lots of families that um, want to go down the path of chelation therapy, yep. and mm -hmm. especially if you are a slow oxidizer, 
it is not good to do that and it can actually be completely uh, um, detrimental to the body. And so, you know, there's a, a number of practitioners out there that that's what they do is chelation therapy, but they don't understand. Uh, I love how you put it in that it's that replacement therapy uh, first because, you know, I, I had never heard it being put that way before, but it completely explains. Uh, so really making sure that you find a practitioner that knows how to read these HTMA tests and knows this fine balance between all of these minerals and these heavy metals. It's not just about bodies overloaded with heavy metals. It's really about, you know, the balance of, and the homeostasis, as we would say, yep. uh, of, the, of, of the whole picture, not just that, um, not just that uh, particular test. And I think, a, I, I think a, good, a good example of this is someone who uh, wouldn't be uh, uh, experienced in reading an HMA test would see high magnesium as, oh, there's too much magnesium in the body. Yeah. When in actual fact, what does it mean, Lisa? It means it's a loss. It's being lost from the cells. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I came across that once with a practitioner uh, who approached me and said, you know, I don't understand why you use HTMA. It's completely irrelevant. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why do you say that? She goes, well, I do micronutrient testing. And I said, okay, well, tell me, tell me where this analysis came from. She's like, well, I ran an HTMA and I ran a micronutrient test and the micronutrient test tells her about minerals that are insufficient. Mm -hmm. And one of them was zinc. And, and then she said, but then I looked at the HTMA and the zinc was high. And I'm like, but what did the rest of the test look like? Because in a lot of cases, you know, you address, you talked about magnesium, the other ones, potassium, zinc, boron, these are all in loss patterns. So they're elevated on the test, but it means that they're being lost and picked up in the hair because they're circulating and they're not getting into the cells and penetrating the cells to be able to be utilized properly. And so again, just another, you know, kind of misconception or misunderstanding. And one of the reasons why, you know, a little education with regards to the HTMA test and, and how the analysis is done is really, really important. Well, Lisa, this has been very educational uh, for, uh, for myself and for listeners. I've loved talking to you and I have to say, I love your accent. Uh, <laughs> As, as a lot of people say to me, I love your accent. I'm like, right? I don't have an accent. It's you that has the accent. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> but I, uh, I look, I, I would even love to get you back because I think that we could we could go on and on and on about this topic. Uh, but I think um, for now, I think that's a great starting point. Um, please, Lisa, you know, tell listeners where they can find and follow you online. Yeah, so just my name, Lisa Patel Killa, L I S A P I T E L K I L L A H. And just for mineral information, and you can obviously uh, find me online, same uh, name as well, dot uh, com. That's my website. And yeah, I mean, there's just so many things with minerals that can be supportive to the body. And I think it's just important to for us to keep educating and keep understanding that there's many, many approaches to health and that starting with that foundation is really important. Definitely. And also that it's a piece of the puzzle and, you know, what we're trying to do here is, uh, and I actually like to, uh, and I've said this analogy a few times is, you know, helping our kids is like baking a pie. Uh, we need uh, to find all the the right ingredients to make that good pie. And, Absolutely. you know, the foundation or the, the pie crust is that diet and the minerals that they're getting from it in the body and things like that. Then you've got yeah. the, you've got the, the filling and that's super important as well. So finding all these little pieces to make that really good pie. Uh, Lisa, thank you for joining me today, sharing your knowledge and experience with all our listeners. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Listeners, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of The Soaring Child. I'm Dana Kay, your ADHD health practitioner. Keep on thriving.